What is going on everybody and welcome back to the electrician's broom. Where's the wall? So we've done a ton of videos on what things actually look like when they're installed in a wall or in a ceiling. What we haven't done is really dug into what the circuitry is actually doing with those particular installs. So today, starting with a three-way switch, we're gonna draw it on a whiteboard, go over the circuitry, let's jump into it. So with this example, we're gonna have a three-way switch here, another three-way switch here, and one light. Obviously, you could have more lights on the circuit, but for the example, we're just gonna show one light. And if you notice on each one of these switches, we have two brass screws and a black common screw. Same as the other one, two brass screws, black common screw. Now on one switch, you're going to have a power source and on the other, you're gonna have a switch leg. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Obviously, this switch is closer to our light, so this is gonna be our switch leg. And as you can see over here, we've made this our constant power or power source indicated right here that ties into the black common screw. And as I said, our switch leg will be coming off the black common screw of our other three-way switch that goes directly to our light. Now to connect our two switches together, we're gonna to use these two brass screws to tie in the switches together using what we're gonna call traveler wires. Now in order to make this as easy to understand, I didn't wanna add the neutrals and the grounds just yet. I wanna go over what we have here in depth get an understanding of that, and then we can add the rest of our wires. Starting first with our power source side. Let's say that we had our switch in this position indicated right here. Providing power to the red wire that goes to our next switch. But at this switch, we had it in this position engaged on the black traveler wire. We would not have any power because as you can see, power is coming into the switch on the black common screw being sent to the red traveler wire to the next switch, but this switch is not engaged with the red traveler wire, it's engaged with the black traveler wire. And to clarify, yes, we still would have power, but we would not have power being delivered all the way through our switch leg and up into our light. So now let's say we're gonna switch this switch position. And we are in fact going to engage with the red traveler wire. What we've done now is allowed power to travel all the way through, up into our red traveler wire, through to our next switch, down to our black common screw, to our switch leg, all the way up to our light, providing us with power to our light. Now let's change this switch position. We're gonna switch it to be engaged on the black common, or I'm sorry, the black traveler wire. And now what we've done is we've broken the flow of power going to our light because we changed it from our red traveler to our black traveler all the way over to our next switch and here it is not engaged. So there's no way for the power to get through our switches and to our light. So moving on, we're gonna go ahead and add our neutral wire. Obviously I can't put white on this whiteboard because it's not gonna show up. So I've indicated up here, that color is going to be our neutral. So our neutral is tied in now. What I've done is brought it to each switch location and then all the way to our light. And as you can see at the switch locations, the switch itself does not require a neutral. So all you do is splice it together. These little red things are wire nuts. Bring it to your next switch location, splice the neutral together, and then bring it all the way up to your light. That way your light has a return path for the current to flow back to the power source. And lastly, I've added in our ground wire, which is going to get spliced and pigtailed at each device location and then hooked up to the device on the green screw indicated on the bottom of this switch. Over to the next switch location under the wire nut, spliced and pigtailed to the green screw on this switch, and then it comes out of that wire nut all the way up to the light. Hopefully that provides a little bit of clarity into what's actually going on in a three-way switch. And as you can see, it's not that difficult. All you're doing is selecting between these two, the, the two switch positions that you have to send power on either the red traveler wire or the black traveler wire. And then over here, it's the same exact thing. And once they're both selected on the same traveler wire, you have current flow. If they're selected on different traveler wires, you do not have current flow. And obviously you can just install something, know how it's installed and not really understand what's actually going on, but there's not a whole lot of value in that. So I think that looking at the circuitry like this instead of installed in just a wall is very helpful. So anyways, that wraps up today's video on the circuitry of a three-way switch. If you enjoyed the video or learned something, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments if this is helpful, I would love to know. As always, electrical work is dangerous. Just because you understand this does not mean that you can do it. Always consult with a professional to do electrical work. It can kill you. It can absolutely blow your cheeks off. Um, but that's it for this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.